Well, welcome back to another uh, episode. And returning with us is Barry Kessler. And I probably didn't warn you last week that this was going to be a four-part series, not a two-part <laughs> series. And the reason I didn't is because I didn't know it. <laughs> so uh, things are pretty dynamic here. And when I got reviewing the notes and what we talked about it, it hit me, wow, um, Barry covers three things in her, in her mentoring course. And one is around doing your own work. And another one is on using tools uh, with clients. And the third one uh, is on profitability and money issues within the practice and how you charge. And we didn't even touch on two and three. So I thought, well, I think this has uh, interest to everybody that's listening, whether you are a consumer or a practitioner, um, these tools are pretty important things. Yeah. So um, I am curious, uh, I'm curious, Barry, and how, how you teach these to the practitioners. And then um, I told Barry just before we started that I'm also interested in learning something because I'm in like a um, 15 plus year rut with the tools okay. that I use, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. So how, how do you approach this with your practitioners? Uh, yes. Well, well, and what was the second part of that question? And, and the tools. Okay. So I need to back up and say, these are tools that I teach in my year long program for lay folks. Right. So okay. they're in my books. And so there, you know, I teach my program, my first program in a year, in a year long format. And we go through my three phases, money, healing, money practices, money maps. It's broken down into four months each, you know, each phase. And there's lots of tools and practices and concepts that I teach in each phase. So we spend four months in money healing, four months in money practices, four months in money maps, right? So the first program is really for lay folks to learn the foundation of my methodology and to learn as many tools and practices that I teach in all different ways, right? So I'm learning how to teach this to practitioners, right? Because some folks have taken that year long program and they've been practicing these tools for a while. Many of them have read my books and a lot of these tools and practices are in my books as well, okay? So as in the four month program, not going like step by step, here's this tool, here's this tool. They're just kind of all woven together and we're going deeper mm -hmm. into all of them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about- so you don't about have a section where you teach, okay, now we're gonna talk about the tools. They're all integrated throughout the They're all integrated. Program. I'm expecting them yeah. to have read my books and to already be using them and practicing, practicing them, even though it's an ongoing lifelong journey, right? Of fine tuning, learning a tool, fine tuning it forever. We don't go through the tools. It's four months. It's really live on the spot. Um, each week, there's a different th theme. One week, it's boundaries. One week, it's money stories. One week, it's right. So I'm going more theme based in these mentor calls when I'm teaching other therapists, coaches, and financial co financial professionals, right? Mm -hmm. we're, get, we're gonna talk about the tools. We're talking around it for a second. Oh, that's right? okay. So, mm -hmm. right? A nice segue. <laughs> so that's how, I'm, that's how I'm doing it. It's four months. It's not a year. It's not step by step. It's really four months of, I'm taking people through a lot of the themes that I already teach on and we're going deeper. And these are themes that are just really relevant to practitioners, right? Right. Okay. Um, and then they're seeing me work with each person on the spot. So, so, so let's talk about some of the tools, and then we can come back to answering the question: How am I work? How am I, you know, working with people around this? I have tools in each phase of my methodology, and I'm a tool person. And I'm a. It's like, is it a tool? Is a practice? They're kind of more of a, their practices, their tools and practices. It's kind of, are those different? Can we use that word interchangeably? I do. And, and just for those that, that might wonder, what is the difference between a tool and a practice? I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't, I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm like, here's some tools and you got to practice them. That's how <laughs> I refer to it. You know, like here's some tools, you got to practice it. Or here's some concepts. You got to think about it and practice it. Right. So here I, I, but I am, I love practices because, and I love practices that seem very simple. And then when you actually practice them, it's pretty profound what can happen. And in any practice, you do it baby step, baby step. It's not one and done. You do it, you see how it goes, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again, okay? So here's some practices and I can talk for days about these, right? So I'm gonna start with somatic practices because as we've talked about, I'm a trained somatic therapist. That's what my master's degree is in. When I first started realizing I wanted to teach about money and how to create a, you know, a savvy, confident, creative, healthy relationship to money, all the all the adjectives, right? I knew I needed to bring my body-centered practices over here. They were essential for me. It, it you know, it saved me my twenties. Learning how to listen to my body and learning tools and practices to stay in my body. It, it, you don't stay in your body. You leave it, you come back, you freak out, you come back, you have a big emotion, you come back. And it's not like you're checking out all the time. There's all different versions of what happens, right? But for me, because I'm so sensitive, because I had such huge emotions growing up, Going into my room, closing the door, turning on music, dancing my emotions out, anger, sadness, fear, and then leaving my room, I could come out of my room and then be able to articulate what was going on. So I've always been, I've been a dancer, I've always been, like it's innate to me to get in my body, but I, it's, an also, it's also really hard. So in my 20s, learning some basic somatic tools, I think saved me and gave me lifelong tools to be a human in this world. And then I bring them to everything. So what am I talking about? The, fir the first somatic tool that I bring to everything, to life, to money work, to relationships, to intimacy, is what I call the body check-in. So the body check-in is before you're gonna have a money conversation, before you're going to go online and look at your numbers or do some online shopping, before you're going to make a money decision and buy a car, before you, I mean, before all of these money moments, right? And during them and after the debriefing, I do body check ins. And a body check in can look many different ways, but simply it's just checking in into your body, letting yourself notice what's happening on a physical level, legs crossed, soles of the feet on the floor, shoulders up, shoulders down, letting yourself notice any sensations that are present, hot, cold, butterflies, movement, stillness, letting yourself notice what the emotions are, you know, all the same emotions that come up in every area of life come up here as well. What's the emotion or emotions that are present? I always also check in and say, where's my breathing in my body? Is it in my chest? Is it in my belly? Is it way up in my throat? Is it deep? Is it shallow? So those are the four levels I'm checking in on. If you just wanna check in on your emotional level, great. If you just wanna check in with your breathing, great. If you just wanna, you know, I like to kind of go through those four levels and then I always finish a body check-in, which is what is now called resourcing, which is what is one little adjustment that I can make in my body so that I can feel a sense of okayness. So I can feel a sense of everything's all right, it's okay, right? And that looks different for everyone. It could be loosening your jaw, it could be lowering your shoulders and doing a little shoulder shimmy. It could be seeing if you can get your breath a little deeper in your body or just take another breath. You know, so I always go body check-in, resourcing. And these, these little practices are what I invite my folks to do 
before all money decisions, before all money conversations. And sometimes we forget to do it before as prep, but maybe in the heat of the moment we remember. Like, oh my God, I am having a really big emotion. What is it? Or I want, you know, what is going on with me, right? So body check in, just check in. It could be 10 seconds. What do you notice? What do I notice? There's no right, there's no wrong, right? So, and then sometimes or also at the at the end of it, how did that money conversation go with your mom talking about money? How did it go, you know, after you bought the car? How did it go after you made that online purchase? Like body check it. And it doesn't always end with body check and there's a lot of more a lot more a lot more steps I also suggest. But these are beginning tools for me, body check in and resourcing. Okay? As you were going through that, and I'm wondering how many listeners were like, it just felt like a meditation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, right. Well, the, the, I mean, we all have different words for it. Centering exercises, meditation. You know, I've had people say, I don't want to do body check-in, but I'll meditate. Or, you know, yeah. it's the same thing for me. It's really, there's no, again, there's no right way. There's no one way. Just taking a moment to slow yourself down, check in and let yourself notice what's going on. Right. And what really struck me, and I think we may have talked about this in one of our other sessions was how when my coach originally said, so what are the sensations you're feeling in your body? And I was just like, what language are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and what you're emphasizing is, I, I was really struck by going into your room and, and dancing and being able to emerge with, this is what I'm feeling. Yes. yes and yes. if I had heard you say this 20 years ago, I would have thought, what type of hoodoo voodoo weirdness is this, right? New Movement age. in your bedroom, dancing in your bedroom. Oh my God. You know? How wild. <laughs> and it makes perfect sense to me today um, yeah. because that's getting in touch with all the sensations and everything that's going on. And then you can put the, the, the word to that sensation, which is a feeling, right? Yes. Yes. And you can name what the emotion is and you can sit with it for a moment and you can ask some questions. What does this remind me of? You know, what am I afraid of? You know, what do I need to do next? You know, I always then end my, my body check-ins resourcing with now, what is one next step I can take, you know, or what do I need next? Or do I need to go walk around the block? Do I need a snack? Do I need some water? You know, do I need to pause here and come back to finish this conversation? Do I, you know, there's so much that can happen instead of overwhelming our systems, going too fast into something, you know, I love, really listening to our right pacing, slowing ourselves down, giving ourselves some prep time for all these money moments, noticing what's happening in the middle of it, debriefing afterwards, what does this all lead to? It leads to awareness, more understanding, what our money stories are, what you call money, you, I call money stories, you call money scripts, right? More awareness of family of origin, more awareness of, you know, healthy habits, unhealthy habits, our strengths, challenges, all of that. That's that's what that leads into for me. And also just as a great practice in the moment to stop, pause, slow things down, check in and not override, you know, all these reactions that we have. Okay. So maybe we're we're only gonna get to one tool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have a few more. I don't, I, I want to get to a few more. I want to get to a few more. I just want to underscore how incredibly important this is. It's um, because we spend so much of our life resisting sensations and emotions. We yeah. spend so much of our time attached to the thought and not even knowing what the emotion or the sensation is. And uh, for example, Whenever I ask somebody, so how, how do you feel about that? Usually I get a thought. Well, what I feel is, da 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 Okay, now that's a thought. A feeling is one word. And it could be several one words, right? And the, the practice that you're, you're, you're um, 
I'm emphasizing, and this tool, and I think a great a distinction between a tool not being one and done. You don't do this one time. Yeah. Okay, I did the money script KSM. I done. This is a this is a tool to be practiced. And yeah. and just, I mean, you've said it. I just want to underscore because I think as a listener, I know I could have 20 years ago just, okay, next. All right, great. You're gonna do this little thing. And this is so important. And as you said, opens up. Wow, I didn't know I was feeling that. Wow, I didn't know that was attached to this thought. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned it can be done in 10 seconds because it doesn't have to be a 20 minute sit. In the moment, just, whoa, I'm feeling so much sadness as you're getting ready to put down the credit card to to buy something to basically medicate that feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I just, and here, oh, sorry. We're, we're talking here. So I'm, all, I'm jumping in because I'm so excited. Yep. So here's a little bit of how I use it when I'm working with people. Okay. okay? And so <laughs> when even in my mentor program or if I'm doing a private financial therapy session or, or you know, if someone asks a question in a group, I'm watching what they're doing. I'm watching where their shoulders are. I'm watching where their breathing is. I'm watching what their face is doing. I'm watching, I'm observing, you know, um, them in their bodies, right? Now, I don't always know what's going on with them. I don't know their deep breathing or not breathing. It's, it's different for them, right? But I'm watching and I'm noticing and I will gently when it feels right, say, what just happened there? What are you noticing? You know, I just saw you um, take a breath and your shoulders went up. What, what's happening there? You know, where did you just go? So I'm inviting people to tune into their body, right? Or the gesture or the movement or that they're making. And I'm just asking them to stay there for a moment, to continue to notice, see if there's anything there, right? What they're noticing because people can get really speedy. People can, we can get really stuck in our stories. And I like stories. So sometimes you wanna hear the story, but sometimes I may say, pause, what just happened or, or, you know, so I'm bringing, I'm inviting someone to notice what's happening in their own body, right? Um, And so much learning can happen from, from that place. And so when I'm doing it in the mentor program and I'm inviting the person to notice for themselves, everyone's watching and learning, you know, what are they going to say? How is Barry going to respond to them? Um, And sometimes I'll just invite them into a body check-in or a little deeper, or I'll ask them to find one place in their body where they feel okayness. Like if I feel someone really speedy or overwhelming themselves, or, you know, I might say, hey, pause, bookmark, or let's, you know, Let's sit here for a moment. Let's stay here. So that's a teeny bit of how I'm using that in the moment. Yeah. Okay. All um, right. Go, go on to another one because I could spend the rest of the time talking. I know we can spend the rest of the time talking about this, right? I mean, it's just amazing. We all do things in our bodies. It was why when I first started going to therapy and I went to a male therapist and a talk therapist at 16, it didn't work for me. I just could pretend and tell stories and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and I really needed someone to say what's going in your body. And it wasn't safe with a guy or he wasn't a somatic therapist. I needed somatic therapy, you know, that's so there's just, as we know, there's so much that sits in our body. There's so much that hangs out in our body. There's so many memories. There's so many stories. There's so much beauty. There's so much pain, right? So we have to say hello, right? We have to listen, okay? All right, so there's so much there, but that's, right? That's, that's, those are the somatic tools, just beginning. Another tool is what I call a money date. And this, again, is a practice. So, you know, it, it can also just be a concept, like a money date is just taking some time to say, hey, hello, money. What do you need? What do you got? You know, what is one step I need to take? Did we talk about money dates yet? No, I don't know. I have not. Okay. So, you know, again, I like simple concepts. 
that can be a tool. And when practiced over and over, it's a practice, right? So money date is the same thing because so many people want to stick their head in the sand, want to ignore it. I mean, you have the other end too of people that are hypervigilant, right? And are checking their numbers too much and, right? Um, but the concept here is a money date and it's scheduled or spontaneous. It could start at five minutes a day, can move on to 15 minutes every day, 30 minutes every few days. And when I'm gonna do a money date, I bring out all this stuff. I light my candles, I get out my essential oil. You're gonna really think this is, or years, years ago, this would have been really out there for you. I get out my dark chocolate, I get out my beverage. I basically am setting up the environment so that it feels good to me. It feels like there's some ritual going on. <laughs> I'm putting some meaning and intention into this. So it's not this black and white number. We're just gonna deal with the numbers um, or this totally boring, I'm gonna sit down and have a money date or I'm really afraid of money dates. I'm afraid of all this stuff. I'm afraid to look at my numbers. I'm afraid to set up a bookkeeping system. You know, I get so many people that are just afraid afraid or are so smart, you know, they have a high earning jobs, they, you know, their moms run in the whole household, you know, and they think somehow that they can't take these steps or they weren't good at math. And so they wouldn't be good at a bookkeeping system. And none of that's true. And so one of the practices I do is money dates. And so it's sitting down, setting up your space. Do you need music? Do you need quiet? I need quiet. Some people need music, right? And it's really just giving yourself some time and attention to say, hey, money, what is one next step that we can take? And yeah, sometimes I have my to-do list, you know, got to call the bank lady because she made a transfer in the wrong place or, you know, got to reach out to my financial planner to have a chat with them or time to update some bookkeeping, you know, all those little things or, or got to get my final tax deductions to my account, like all these little to do steps that we have, right? To do. But in order to do them, we have to have some dates with ourselves. So money dates can be solo. Money dates can be with your partner. I do them in a whole different way when it's partner. We'll see if we have time to talk about that. And so you see, it's, it's, it's a date. It's saying, hey, what's going on in my money relationship? Every time I sit down to have a money date, I usually do a body check-in. It's just natural for me because I've done thousands of them, you know, over so, the years, right? So here's another tool practice that needs to happen consistently. And it's like any new habit, you got to create the grooves. So it, you know, as I said, you might have to schedule it five minutes a day to start and build upon it. Um, and there's so much more that happens in money dates, you know, that, that was my question is the date over? When, when you say, okay, well, what do I need to do? Well, you need to uh, get that information to your accountant. Okay, done. Okay, see ya. It's done. See ya. Lock you mean, meaning like, do you just take that one step or you just identify what, what is on your list and then you're done? What, well, what money the... comes up and says, this is what you need to do. Is that the end of the day? Well, then you got to do it. <laughs> oh, so on the date while you're sitting there. <laughs> Then you go yes. ahead and get yes. the stuff together, or you make the call, yes. or you get into the books. Yes. Oh, yes. So that's, okay. why Good. that's why it's just five minutes at the beginning and you build upon there. So every morning I wake up and, you know, I, part of my routine is at some point I go online to look at, you know, I go to my online banking. I look at my balances. I look at my numbers. I open up a few counts to see if there's any funny, anything funny, if it all looks good. Right. Right. Do I need to transfer any money? I take care of all the little basics. That's like a little spontaneous money date. It's just part of my ritual, right? So you kind of have no, a dashboard that you can start your money date off with. We're going to do, do these three, six things and just well, check. Yeah, I wouldn't even do that much. I mean, maybe down the road, but people at the beginning need like one thing to do Got or they it. need to set a timer and say for 15 minutes, I'm going to work on my to-do list, right? And then I'm going to go take a break. And then I'm going to come back or for 15 minutes, I'm going to pay some bills or for 15 minutes, I'm going to send out some invoices or for 15 minutes, I'm going to have a chat with my spouse around money. Right. 
So no, a money date is not just like body check and light the candles, get out all the chocolate. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> identify, identify what, what's next, next steps you need to take and take one, you know? So how do you do this with the spouse? We have a few minutes left and that's probably yes. going to get into. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> this is like, we could be talking for days and days and days. And I'm sure two tools practices here, but I'll, I'll, but this is the thing. They're, again, they're, they seem so simple and then they're so profound when you actually yes, practice exactly. them day in and day out. It's a completely different story, right? Couples, I do money dates in a whole new different way because most of us don't know how to have loving, compassionate conversations with our spouses. You know, we get the credit card bill and we go running towards them, you know, while they're in the shower or we bring it up right before we're going to bed. Like, you know, we do all the things that is, is not going to be so helpful, right? Instead of like, hey, can we have a money date now? Or can we schedule a money date in the calendar? Or can we go out for dinner and have a money date? You know, Forrest and I, my husband and I have some of the best visioning moments on, you know, out for dinner, right? Over a glass of wine. So with couples, I do it in four parts. And it's, not numbers first. It's not looking at the spreadsheets first. It's number one, it's story time. And so, you know, it could be a 30 minute money day to start. You each get 15 minutes. And I want you to share stories about your childhood. You know, what did you learn around money from your mom, from your grandparents? You know, if you had siblings, what was your role as a young kid? You know, I always talk about how I was the identified spender where my siblings were the savers. Like, from age five on, you know, and how did you feel about that? And just starting to tell different stories. And I have hundreds of journaling questions and exercises in my second book, The Art of Money Workbook. And couples have been taking one question, two questions and having a little money date. And couples who've been together 10, 20, 30 years learn new things about each other, right? Okay. Because, right, so that's number one story time. like. You just tell stories about what you learned, what you didn't learn, what was hard for you, beautiful moments, hard moments, all of that from childhood. The second thing is values. So discussing, obviously, you come together, attraction, all these other things. And on the surface, you you probably think you have the same values. And you probably do. But when you go to earn and spend and save and give and invest, it's usually different, right? So number two is talking about not just what are your values, but how do you spend and where are you different? And where my husband likes big ticket, big purchase items, like a big expensive road bike. I, you know, that horrifies me. It doesn't anymore, but it used to. I like lots of small little things, acupuncture, facial lotions, you know, and once we added up all of my stuff over two years or something, and it basically equaled his very expensive road bike, <laughs> right? And um, chocolate acupuncture, chocolate, right? <laughs> so that's number two. Number three then is, you know, who's on what? And this is who's going to do the bookkeeping. And in a long relationship, maybe one of you does it for a while, and then maybe you switch, you know, I did it for years. And one day, my husband said, I'm going to take it on. And I was like, wow, what is amazing, delightful surprise, right? Who's who's on the bookkeeping, who's good at it? You know, some people want to do it because they like to have control of everything. But if that's the case and the partner needs to start coming in once a month, you know, so who's on what and all of that. Right. And the what's fourth, number four? Go. Number Go four is, is getting on the same team. It's okay. basically realizing you are on the same team. So, again, in a long marriage, this is the goals and larger visioning. Like one of you may need to leave their job at some point and start a new career. One of you may want to go back to school. Maybe you want to travel. You know, it's just really, really realizing you are really, truly on the same team, even with your different styles of how you do money, life, spending, earning all of it. And you really need to learn how to support each other. Mary. And, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> and that's and that's a wrap those and are two that's practices a wrap. please start practicing them two tools get the book there's a lot more okay thank you so much barry